Today, August 9th, 1941, at St. Louis, Missouri, upward of 100,000 of Jehovah's Witnesses. And people of goodwill are gathered in theocratic assemblies to worship the Most High God. During this hour, we are to hear one who is most fully qualified to speak on the subject advertised, Comfort All That Mourn. I now present the speaker, Judge Rutherford. What is said on this occasion, it is hope, will bring consolation to some who desire better things than the prevailing conditions in this world of unrighteous. When the people of all nations mourn, when all are in distress and greatly perplexed, there is need of diligence to ascertain the cause of distress and to learn and give heed to the prescribed remedy for such. Never within the memory of man has there been on earth such a general condition of sorrow and mourning as now. Never at a time when the people need comfort as they do now. Who can give that desired comfort? The creator of heaven and earth, the almighty God whose name alone is Jehovah, is the God of all comfort. In the Bible, which is his word, he has set forth the truth, telling plainly, why the people mourn, and what's the complete remedy thereof? All persons who would have such information, and who would receive comfort, must resort to and give heed to the word of God. All persons who are now of goodwill toward Almighty God will do that very thing. Christians are those persons who follow the lead of the Lord Jesus Christ. They are the servants of the Almighty God. As his servants, they are duly and fully ordained and commissioned by the Almighty God to deliver his message of truth to all persons on earth who are of good will toward Jehovah. The commission which Almighty God has given to each one of his faithful servants set forth in the scripture, and from which I quote these words, Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captive, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn. This is the day of vengeance of our God, and therefore the time when he will vindicate his holy name. Before he exercises his power for the vindication of his name, his servants must proclaim his great name throughout the earth as a witch, because he has commanded it must be done. For several years past, the witnesses of Jehovah have declared to the people throughout the earth the purpose of God to vindicate his name and of his vengeance against all wicked. The time draws near, therefore, for him to exercise his supreme power. This is the day in which the people mourn. This is the time when Jehovah's servants must carry the message of God's comfort to all that mourn. This is the time when the good news of gospel must be preached as commanded of the Lord to all nations for a witness, and that preaching must be done by those who are devoted to Jehovah, and who, therefore, are Jehovah's witnesses. Every follower of Christ Jesus, who is in a covenant to do the will of God, is, and indeed must be, a preacher of this gospel in obedience to the Lord's commandment. All such have, in obedience to God's commandment, separated themselves from the things of this world, and they must, as commanded, keep themselves unspotted from the world. They must devote all of their energies to preaching this gospel of the kingdom to the people, in order that those who mourn may receive comfort. That is the present-day work of paramount importance to all who would live. Those in distress and who mourn and who desire comfort must fully realize that Almighty God is the fountain of life and source of all comfort and joy. The Bible contains all that needed information which will comfort all who desire righteousness and peace. The faithful servants of God, receiving comfort from the Lord as set forth in the Bible, must bear that same message of comfort to them that are in trouble 
and who desire to hear the truth. Such is the present-day commission and work of Jehovah's Witness. The people are torn by war, famine, pestilence, and beset by all manner of wickedness. No longer are the people free to assemble, speak, and worship God as he has commanded. Because in many of the countries of this world, where there has been freedom of worship and freedom of speech, the wise acres, according to this world, have said that meeting together and teaching God's word and preaching the gospel is illegal. All human remedies that they have offered for such troubles on earth have failed. And in the world, the people are without hope. The hour has struck when the people must turn to God and to his word. They would receive comfort and survive the terrible disaster that is impending and about to fall upon all the nations of the earth. What's the cause of the great mourning of the people of all nations? How is it possible for the people to have peace and joy? Those two questions are answered in the terse and forceful words of the Bible recorded in Proverbs 29, 2, which reads, When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear through, the people mourn. Sorrow, distress, and mourning of the people of all nations at this time is therefore, as the Lord has stated, is because that the wicked now bear rule and use their ruling authority to oppress and to regiment the people, to take away their liberties and the substance of their labor. The only remedy is the authoritative rule of the world by the king of righteousness. Those who now exercise faith in God and in his word, and who obtain the truth from his word, look forward with eagerness to the day when the righteous shall be in complete authority in all the earth. It is the truth that will make the people free from fear and from mourning. Receiving the truth, their joy at once begins. That's why the hundred thousand people on these grounds today are all smiles. <laughs> From the Bible testimony, both the wicked and the righteous must be definitely identified, and this must be done before any man can understand and appreciate the cause of the world of stress and what is the true remedy therefor. The mighty wicked ruler is Satan the death. He is, the in, he is invisible to human eyes, but exercises tremendous power over men and nations. Associated with him is a host of wicked angels or demons, likewise invisible to human eyes, and at all times preying upon the people. That invisible wicked rule is represented on the earth by visible angels that yield to and are controlled by the invisible demon power. Those human agents generally are entirely blind to the fact that the demons exercise the real ruling power, and hence they are led blindly into deeds of wickedness. Concerning this, it is written in the Bible that Satan, the god of this world, hath blinded the minds of them which believe not the scriptures, lest the light of the glorious knowledge of Christ Jesus, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Those that believe not, here mentioned, are the ones who do not have an exercise faith in God and in Christ, and who disregard the Bible as God's word. Satan is the prince or god of this world. He's the chief of demons, meaning that he's the leader of all demon hosts. The rule of wickedness is over the entire earth, as it's written in 1 John. The whole world lies in the wicked one. Since the year 1914, the sorrows and mourning of the nations has continuously increased. And the reason therefore is stated in Revelation 12 in these words, Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth, meaning the rulers of the earth, and of the sea, meaning the people that bear up and support the nation. For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. The devil knows that his time is short, because the time is here when he must be ousted, and when righteousness shall rule the world. And which good news can proclaim brings comfort and joy to all who have faith in God and in his word. The present is the transition period from wickedness to righteousness. Almighty God, whose name alone is Jehovah, is the eternal righteous one. God is the generation of righteousness. All his ways are righteous, and his commandments are righteous. His beloved Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, whom Jehovah has made Lord and King of the world, is the express image of his father, Jehovah. He is the world's rightful and righteous king, duly appointed and anointed by Jehovah to rule. God's new time, when he shall rule, has come. His rule as king of the theocracy is of the greatest importance to all creation. 
Under his rule, the righteous will of Jehovah shall be done on the earth. For this reason, Jesus commanded all of his followers to pray to God these words. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is done in heaven. Concerning Christ Jesus, the righteous king, it is written in Psalms 9, the government shall be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, and of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. When that righteous king rules, the world in completeness, the people shall rejoice. The hour for his unobstructed rule is at hand. And every person who gets life everlasting must take his place wholly on the side of the king of theocracy, and doing so will participate in the blessings to be administered. This good news or gospel now be preached to the people, that they may have hope and an opportunity to choose Christ Jesus, the king of righteousness, and live. And failing to do so, they must remain supporters of the wicked rule and perish. Each person, therefore, must choose his own destiny. Can't be chosen for him by some priest who thinks he's saving souls. <laughs> the obligation and commission of Jehovah's Witnesses is to proclaim the truth of and concerning the theocracy, which shall enable the people to intelligently choose. The facts are indisputable, and therefore admitted that the Gnostics, fascists, and the mightiest religious organization on earth acting together and designated by all people as the Axis powers, now rule from Norway to Egypt, and within that realm the people mourn. That mourning has been reflected to the Western Hemisphere until it has involved the entire earth. That ruling power is opposed to the kingdom of God and to Christ and violently opposes everyone who advocates the theocracy. Opposing the Nazis, Religious combine is another mighty world power, carried on by the political and commercial strongmen of the nation, those nations, and ably supported by religious leaders. That world power is generally known as the advocate of democracy. During the World War from 1914 to 1918, adopted and used the slogan, this war will make the world safe for democracy. That ruling power does not advocate the kingdom of God and hence is against the theocracy. The Almighty God knew the end from the beginning, set down the words pertaining thereto, but hid the meaning thereof until his own due time to reveal the same. Mark well the lost prophecy describing those two great ruling powers and the end thereof. More than 2,000 years ago, Jehovah dictated his prophecy to Daniel, the servant of God, and it is written in the Bible, it appears that the meaning of the divine prophecy is hidden from men until God's due time for the same to be understandable. God's due time is when he brings to pass the events well known to all persons who desire to know which events fit the prophecy, and the meaning of the prophecy is thereby made understandable. When God had completed the dictation of the prophecy, here considered to Daniel, Daniel says, and I heard, but I understood not. Then said I, O oh, my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he, God, said, Go thy way, O Daniel. For the words shall close up and seal till the time of the end. Then the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. That answers the question today as to why the religionists are in the absolute darkness and little children outsider in the light. <laughs> the time of the end is now here. Sure and unfeeling promise of Jehovah God is, now the wise shall understand. Well, who are the wise? The wise are those who fear Jehovah God, who devote themselves to him and who serve him and his kingdom faithfully and truly, and who keep themselves unspotted and unmixed from the devilish things of this world. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandment. His praise endureth forever, says the psalmist. This prophecy of Daniel tells of two mighty opposing ruling powers. Now the time has come to identify both of them and understand what they mean. One of these powers is designated by the prophet 
as the king of the north. The other is designated for the same prophet as the king of the south. The identification of these two things is essential to an understanding of the prophecy as set forth in Daniel 11, chapter 27 onward. Those two kings, Mark, you are not mere men, but are world ruling powers in which men play their parts as the servants of the wicked one, the God of this world. Both of such ruling powers are instruments of the organization created and employed by Satan to keep the people in ignorance of Jehovah and his great theocratic government, and Satan's purpose is to turn the people away from Almighty God and lead them into destruction. This he does in his endeavor to carry out the wicked challenge flung into the face of Jehovah centuries ago. Satan is the father of lies. And it's easier to identify his children in this world. <laughs> Hence he causes both of his ruling powers. Now mark these words of the prophet which I'm about to read. He causes both of his ruling powers here mentioned to resort to lies in order to blind themselves and to blind the people to the truth, particularly concerning the theocracy. King of the North is that ruling power which is totalitarian and dictatorial, which rules and claims the right to rule the nations of the earth, and which is violently opposed to the theocratic government of Jehovah by Christ Jesus, and opposes and persecutes those servants of God who proclaim the coming and universal rule of the kingdom of righteousness. Politics and religion are the chief elements that go to make up the king of the north. That ruling power began with Nimrod, the earth's first political religious dictator, who compelled the people to worship him and to obey his command. From time to time, that power has prevailed in the earth, and today is represented in the Axis Combine, which seeks to rule the world and proclaims its purpose to set up once again the Holy Roman Empire. It violently opposes the theocracy, persecutes those who support a righteous government. And that's why it maintains a hatchery in St. Louis. <laughs> the king of the north is the world's ruling power which rules and claims the right to rule the nations of the earth in the name of democracy. Dominant elements of such power are commerce, politics, and religion. And that explains something about the St. Louis Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> it began with ancient Egypt, the first world power controlled by commerce, politics, and religion. Today, it is specifically represented in the British Commonwealth of Nations and the nations supporting that empire. It does not advocate and support Jehovah's theocratic government by Christ Jesus, and is therefore against the kingdom of God, as the king declares at Matthew 12, he that is not with me is against me. Due to the instructions received from their religious advisors, both the king of the north and the king of the south have false conclusions as to the kingdom of God. Instead of recognizing Jehovah's anointed king, Christ Jesus, who was enthroned in 1914, both the king of the north and the king of the south set themselves against the theocracy, and their action is in fulfillment of God's prophetic words set down at Psalms 2 in these words. The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his Christ. The devil planted that ambitious desire in the minds of both kings to rule the earth. He might bring about the destruction of the nations before Armageddon. Both strive for world domination. Let this sound throughout the earth that the great issue today is world domination. Shall the world be ruled by selfish men under the dictates of demons, or shall it be ruled by Jesus Christ, God's anointed king. That's the issue. To that end, both strive to employ and do employ diplomacy and force manifested this was particularly 1914 and 1918 in the World War. Then both sat at the same table to formulate a scheme to rule the world, and the League of Nations was born 
but the wet nurse hasn't been able to keep it alive. <laughs> At this point of the prophecy of Daniel, it is written, which I quote, Both these things, heart, shall be to do mischief, and they shall speak lies at one table, but it shall not profit, for yet the end shall be at the time of parting. While they speak lies to each other, their chief lie is that they deny that Jehovah God is the supreme power, and that Christ Jesus is the rightful rule of the world by reason of his appointment from the great theocrat, Jehovah God, and they deny that his kingdom has now come. The word of God plainly says that the table around which they sit is the table of demons, and that's recorded in 1 Corinthians 11. And that, the chief of demons is Satan, who is the father of lies, and therefore they work as their father directs. Then the religious instructors at the end of the World War announced that the League of Nations is the instrument of God to rule the world. The League of Nations to which both kings subscribed at the time, stood up and in substance said, We will rule the world instead of Christ, Jehovah's anointed king. That marks the beginning of the public manifestation of the desolating abomination mentioned by Daniel and by the Lord Jesus Christ. Now both the king of the north and the king of the south stand where they ought not to stand and boastfully claim the right to rule the world in concerning which Jesus said, when ye shall see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet, standing where it ought not, let him that readeth understand, then let them that be in Judea flee, it, flee to the mountain. Thus the Lord identifies the abomination of desolation, warns the people of goodwill toward God that they must flee to the kingdom of God by Christ Jesus, symbolized by the mountain, before the terrors of Armageddon fall upon the nations of the earth. Now... All the world witnesses the king of the north and the king of the south in a deadly grip of war to determine which shall rule the world. Prophecy says that the purpose of both kings is to do mischief or wickedly because they're both against Jehovah and his kingdom of Christ Jesus. Then the prophecy adds, which I quote, it shall not prosper, for yet the end shall be at the time appointed. Their efforts shall not forestall Jehovah in establishing his government of righteousness. No power can successfully interfere with Jehovah in establishing his government of righteousness. No power can successfully interfere with Jehovah in carrying out his purpose. The Almighty God says, I have purposed it, I will also do it. The great God of eternity who sits in the heavens shall have and does have both of these things in derision and laughs at their futile efforts to declare him and his witnesses, an illegal thing if they can't talk. They'll have to laugh out of the corner of their mouth pretty soon. <laughs> the prophecy of Daniel at the 11th chapter proceeds to detail the struggle between the king of the north and the king of the south, and definitely tells of the everlasting end of the totalitarian rule, and that axis combine, the dictatorial rule, and it shall cease forever. On this occasion, it's not possible for me to find time to relate the details of that prophecy, but by the Lord's grace, the Watchtower, in the very near future, will publish the same, that the people of goodwill throughout the earth may be enlightened and strengthened in hope for complete relief. <laughs> Both of the kings of North and South fight desperately for world domination and bleed the people to the last drop in order to carry out their selfish ambition. They're working great destruction upon the nation, increasing the burdens of all and causing the people to mourn. Great. What's the attitude of Jehovah's people concerning this controversy? That's what they all wish to know just now. Shall they take sides and fight either for the king of the north or the king of the south? Almighty God commands. They must remain entirely neutral in the controversy. Because his covenant people are servants and representatives of the theocracy, they must hold themselves entirely aloof from warring factions of this world. In neutrality, Jesus Christ takes the lead and commands all the faithful supporters of his kingdom to follow his steps. To his faithful followers, Jesus says, Ye are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Because ye are not of the world, I have chosen you out of the world. 
You are opposed and hated by all the nations for my name's sake. And it doesn't take much evidence to prove that that's true, even in America. Jehovah's covenant people are the representatives of the theocracy and must hold fast their integrity to our God and his kingdom. To do otherwise means their destruction everlastingly. They have no other alternative. Jehovah's covenant people are now engaged in the work of greatest importance to mankind, to wit, the directing of the people, the only possible means of peace, comfort, and life. This one thing they must do. The prophecy shows that in order to fight against the totalitarian forces of the king of the south, the totalitarian forces becomes more and more bitter, and the king of the south's forces becomes more dictatorial. Both the king of the north and the king of the south adopt the same method or means, and as a result, burdens of the people gradually increase, and they mourn bitterly. Such is the present-day experiences of the nations of the earth. For that reason, no nation under the sun has escaped sorrow and mourning. What then shall be the end of this great distress and mourning? Shall the totalitarian dictators succeed in controlling the earth? God's prophecy answers that to the full satisfaction of all who love righteousness. Prophecy tells that the king of the north, the Axis power, receives information which proceeds from God and Christ and which greatly troubles the world power. And therefore, he, the king of the north, shall go forth with great fury to destroy and utterly to make away many. Yet he shall come to his end and none shall help him. That will mark the end of the rule of wickedness and will mean the end of mourning for the people and will mean the end of the Axis powers, including Nazism, Fascism, and Romanism. By revealing to his comfort covenant people the meaning of his prophecy, Jehovah brings to them great comfort now. Because what honest man is there that would not rejoice to know that in the very near future this great controversy shall end? None have suffered more than those who have held fast their integrity toward God. They have suffered for righteousness' sake, bearing the reproaches of all who are under the control of the wicked one. Because of their faithfulness to God and his king Jehovah, God directs his covenant people with this message. Grace be unto you, and peace from God our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort, who comforteth us in our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble, by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Thus Jehovah plainly commands what course his servants must now take, and that course is to comfort all that mourn. You can't comfort those who do not mourn because of the wicked people. Obeying God's commandment and desiring to aid and comfort those who are in trouble, Jehovah's servants and witnesses now delight to call attention to the message of the Lord, which has brought them great comfort, and they bid those that mourn to give a hearing ear back them to that message because it is from the Lord. Thank God that the message does not proceed from any man. Again, you are reminded of Je Jehovah's emphatic words, quote, When the wicked bear rule, the people mourn. With the present worldwide mourning of the people, it must be apparent to all that the wicked now rule the nations of the earth, and of which there could be not the slightest doubt. Furthermore, the present world powers offer absolutely no remedy for the betterment of the people. Jehovah's remedy is certain and complete, and I bid you to give close attention to that while I announce. Following the wicked rule of the dictator Nimrod, God made known his purpose to raise up what the scriptures speak of as the seed, that is, his own king, and to set up his kingdom, through which all the people of the earth might receive the blessings of peace, prosperity, joy, happiness, and life everlasting. Jehovah's purpose never fails. In his due time, his expressed will must be done and shall be carried out. The kingdom which Jehovah promised is the kingdom for which Christians for centuries have prayed as Jesus commanded, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. All the ways of Jehovah are righteous, 
And when his will is done in the earth, that means the righteous rule or government of the earth, in which there shall be no sorrow or mourning among the people. With the end of the rule of dictators, God's kingdom of righteousness shall rule the people right here on the earth. They shall then rejoice because it's written. When the righteous were in authority, the people were joined. Repeatedly, his many prophets, God has told of the coming of his kingdom. Those faithful prophets suffered martyrdom because of their faithfulness in advocating that coming kingdom. Then God said into the earth, his son, whom Jehovah anointed and made king. Before the Roman governor, Jesus declared that he is the king. Jesus was put to death by, and by his lifeblood purchased the human race. That is to say, all of them who had inherited condemnation and who believe on him and obey. God raised up Christ Jesus out of death. That great spirit exalted to heaven is now the king and rightful ruler of the world. God gives his unfailing promise. That in due time, Christ Jesus, the King, shall be enthroned and rule the world in righteousness. That promise is certain of fulfillment. Furthermore, the Lord makes known by his word that the setting up of the kingdom of righteousness will be attended by great trouble, by war, famine, pestilence, oppression of the people, and intense distress of the nations. Such troubles and wars are now here, as all can see, and are due to the fact that the devil refuses to yield up the rulership of the world without a great struggle. Hence, the devil brings ever-increasing walls upon the people. These events have come to pass in the present time and are in fulfillment of the prophecies of God. All the people may observe them who desire. While the two kings, the king of the north and the king of the south, engage in the most deadly and destructive war of all time, God of heaven sets up his kingdom. As Jehovah by his prophet Daniel foretold in these words, In the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. That kingdom has now come, and the king is in action. The testimony that goes forth to the witnesses of this convention is a part of his work. His first work is to inform the people of what is taking place. These present-day events will be quickly followed by the complete destruction of Satan's rule to the end, that righteousness may obtain in all the earth and forever without interruption. During the past few years, the Lord has sent forth his servants to bear witness before the people, often concerning his kingdom. And this, when finished, shall be followed quickly by the battle of the great day of God Almighty, and which shall be the greatest tribulation the world has ever known. Such is precisely in fulfillment of the prophetic utterance of Jehovah set forth in Exodus 9, 16, which God tells why he's left the devil here. The power of the Lord at Armageddon exercised against God's enemies will put an everlasting end to the Axis powers and to all similar powers of weakness. All of such have forgotten and turned against God and his kingdom. And the decree of Almighty God of, is written against them in these words. The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. The wicked, once all turned out, then the kingdom of God will be in full operation and his will shall then be done in the earth as in heaven. The righteous government is the theocratic government. It is the government of Jehovah God by Christ Jesus. Concerning Christ it is written, the government shall be upon his shoulder. That government of righteousness shall endure, and the king, as the official of Jehovah, shall administer life everlasting to all who obey him. If you believe God, and that the Bible contains his word, then hear and rejoice in the emphatic statement thereof, to it, which I quote from the prophecy of Isaiah. Behold, a king shall rule in righteousness, and princes shall rule in judgment. The king here mentioned is Christ Jesus, the great theocratic king, and his rule shall always be righteous and in righteousness. He is and forever will be invisible to human eyes, but in the earth, leaning amongst the joyful people, will be his visible representatives. Who are they? 
Those who are now here? No, not that. Again, no the prophecy of Daniel. When Jehovah gave Daniel the prophecy, he, Daniel did not understand it, and so state, Jehovah caused his angel then to appear to Daniel and to deliver from Jehovah this message. But go thy way till the time of the end, O Daniel, for thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of the day. Clearly this part of the prophecy means that Daniel died and has since rested in death. But at the end of the days of the prophecy, Daniel shall be raised out of death as a perfect man and stand in his lot. The promise of God is that then the prophecy shall be understood. And now the prophecy is understood, which is proof that we may confidently expect Daniel, the prophet of God, to soon stand amongst the peoples upon this earth. And many will see him and rejoice. Those who love the Lord and his kingdom are looking for these prophets and will not be surprised when they come. <laughs> and what is Daniel's lot, as God named it? Daniel, together with other faithful men of all, from Abel to John the Baptist, when raised out of death to perfection as a human, shall be the governors or visible representatives of the theocratic government on the earth. Heretofore, they've been called the fathers in Israel, but when they come, they shall be children and representatives of Christ the King, thereafter be known as the princes or governors in all the earth. Hence it is written in the song, Instead of thy fathers, shall they be thy children, whom thou, the Lord, mayest make princes in all the earth. At the 11th chapter of Hebrews, a list appears of the, uh, the names of many of these faithful men, which include all the prophets. Therefore, necessarily, Daniel is among them. All of those the Lord declares shall constitute the princes or governors in the earth, and they shall rule in judgment and justice. They will put in force the judgments of the Lord, and all of their actions in harmony with the Lord will be in justice and righteousness. Then, instead of mourning, the people shall rejoice. The rule of the earth for the axis power, and the so-called democracy. Hold out to the people no hope of peace, security, life, or happiness. I challenge any soul under the sun to point to any hope that they hold out. Those <laughs> those desiring blessings of life, liberty, and happiness must therefore now turn to the theocracy if they would enjoy these blessings. The Bible was written for the very purpose of furnishing the basis for hope of such as love God and his kingdom that they might receive comfort in this hour of distress. People must now gain a knowledge of the Bible, thereby learn the way by which they can receive everlasting blessings. And that's why you are devoting your time to try to tell the people about these great truths. All the people of goodwill desire peace, whether they be of one section of the earth or the other. The battle of that great day of God Almighty will forever end the rule of selfishness and wickedness. That will mean the end of war. There shall never be another war or time of tribulation, as the Lord has promised. The righteous Lord will teach the obedient people his way, and they will walk in the way of righteousness. No more will they make instruments of war, because, as the Lord declares, Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. When in 1918 a temporary peace was declared, the people rejoiced, even though that joy was of short duration. When the people of goodwill shall learn that there will never be another war, they will rejoice forevermore. Under the theocratic government, peace, like a mighty river that never ceases to flow, will go on and on and endure to the endless comfort and joy of all the people. And it's the joy and privilege of the witnesses of the law to this convention to tell this glad news to the people of Missouri as well as all other parts of the land. <laughs> Thank you.
the theocratic government by Christ Jesus will be wholly righteous and its laws administered at all times without partiality. The people will have no occasion to fear in him. It's because none shall be permitted to exist. The people shall walk together in peace, lying down and sleeping in security, and none shall make them afraid. The rule of the wicked has brought upon the people's indescribable suffering and the death of countless innocents, and the badge of mourning has marked every hole. The rule of the wicked offers no hope of life. Why longer look in that direction? I appeal to the people of my native state to calmly look into your Bible and find the only hope for life. Otherwise, I would not be here. <clears throat> The righteous rule that Christ Jesus guarantees everlasting life to all obedient ones, as it is written. This is life eternal, that they might know thee the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. Salvation belongs to Jehovah, not to any religious organization that ever existed. Jehovah administers life to the obedient people by Christ Jesus the King. Under his reign, obedient ones shall live and never die. Give heed to the comforting words published for those who give their entire devotion to the theocracy. In symbol, that government of righteousness is called the Holy City because it is Jehovah's organization. It constitutes the new heavens and new earth wherein dwells righteousness, turning that kingdom. The utterance at Revelation 21 of great comfort to all who believe them. I quote, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. All the first heaven and first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city of the new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven say, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with men. And he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crime, nor shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. These words of the Lord now give great comfort to all who hear and believe them. All who support and obey the theocratic government shall receive these blessings of everlasting life. The present is the worst of time because of the present wicked rule. By faith we see the wicked rule now coming to an end. The present, therefore, is also the best of time. Till now, because we see the theocratic government is coming in, it is therefore the time when all who put their trust in God should rejoice. The kingdom promised long centuries ago has come, the day of deliverance is near, and concerning this Jesus says, when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your deliverance draweth nigh. To the generation that seeks the face of Jehovah, and who desire everlasting right, the Almighty God says, lift up your head, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up the everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. The only hope for the peace and life and rest of the people is in the theocratic government. All persons now on earth who expect or hope to live must flee to that righteous government, and all others shall be destroyed. To those who would live, the great theocrat says, All worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear before him all the earth. Say among the nations that the Lord reigns. The world also shall be established that it shall not be moved. He shall judge the people righteously. Let the heavens rejoice. And let the people be glad. Let the sea roar and the fullness thereof. Let the field be joyful and all that's therein. Then shall all the trees of the wood rejoice before the Lord. For he cometh. He cometh to judge the earth. He shall judge the world in righteousness 
and the people with his truth. The end of the rule of the wicked totalitarian powers is about to end. Soon the combined elements of wickedness will put forth their supreme effort in their final endeavor to destroy all who support the theocracy. They shall fail, and none shall help them because God has decreed it so. The time is not far distant when they, the enemy, shall say, Now we are at peace and safety because we have all these Jehovah's Witnesses in the jug. And then let the Lord take a hand. <laughs> Concerning that time, the Lord says he will literally destroy all such wicked rules. Behold the righteous theocratic government of Christ Jesus, taking possession and ruling the world in righteousness. He who is the Prince of Peace, the everlasting Father, the King of Glory, will have complete control from his throne in heaven. Daniel and the other faithful men of old, They'll stand in their lot as the visible governors of the people and representatives of the theocracy. Then the people will be comforted and greatly rejoice. Jehovah God has surely sent his witnesses to now deliver his message of comfort to the people to goodwill. Those who hear and flee to the theocracy and seek righteousness and meekness have Jehovah's promise that they may be hid from the terrible storm of Armageddon and be safely carried over, even as Noah and his family were carried over the flood. Those survivors who obey the king will be granted the unspeakable privilege of carrying out the divine mandate to multiply and fill the earth with a righteous people, and they will rejoice forever. Who will this day hear and understand these truths from Almighty God? Jehovah gave Daniel the answer in these words which I quote. None of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. Do you suppose that these great religionists understood that they'd persecute the men and women who were carrying this message of Jehovah to the people? No, they wouldn't. And the fact that they do persecute him is conclusive evidence that they do not understand and therefore put themselves in the wicked class. The wise are those who believe, fear, and serve Almighty God and His beloved Son, Christ Jesus. Each one must make his own individual choice. The opponents of the theocracy will remain with the wicked and perish forever. They that be wise will choose to serve the King of glory and receive the blessings of life everlasting. The wise will now receive great comfort from this message from the word of Almighty God who is the Father of mercy and the God of all comfort, and whose name alone is Jehovah. And now, my friends, I'm sure that we all wish to jointly send a message to our friends of goodwill throughout America and to a convention that shall be assembled shortly in England and to all peoples of earth who are of goodwill toward God. Therefore, I propose this message which I read, having received great comfort from Jehovah's word, now enjoying the privilege of being his servant, we send you this message of comfort that you too may, in this hour of world distress, receive consolation and lay hold upon that which will bring you in this life and joy. The unfailing promise of Jehovah, repeatedly stated in the Bible, is that soon he shall destroy all wickedness and wicked rule in the earth to be followed by the rule of righteousness for Christ Jesus and his visible representatives on the earth and which government shall afford boundless blessings to the people. The transition period is now here, evidence for the world trouble, and which soon shall end with Armageddon the battle of that great day of God Almighty. The only place of safety is under the theocracy, that righteous rule of Jehovah by Christ Jesus. All who oppose that government shall perish forever. All who have goodwill to our Jehovah and his theocratic government by Christ Jesus, and who now flee thereto, they find safety in life. The rulers of wickedness now stand where they ought not to stand. 
wrongfully claiming the right to rule the world contrary to Jehovah and his team. That totalitarian dictatorial rule the Lord declares to be the desolating abomination foretold by Daniel his prophet. The Lord warns all persons of goodwill to immediately flee to Jehovah's government by Christ Jesus, which is the theocracy, and which is the only place of safety. Be wise, therefore, and obey the Lord's warning and commandments, and immediately take your stand on the side of theocracy, that you may have joy and enjoy the everlasting blessings from the Lord. If you believe that this is a message of loving kindness which you wish to join in sending to the people, say aye. Aye. It's a blessed privilege to stand in this place, the land where I happen to be born, and speak to the children and offsprings of some who are neighbors and personal friends of mine. And I count it a great blessing from the Lord to be permitted to have something to do with bringing to the people of this state a message of comfort. I bid you, each one and all, to calmly consider what do any of the world powers hold for me that will bring in a lasting benefit? You will find none. And then ask, what are the benefits the great theocratic government holds if I turn my heart to Jehovah God and his king? And you will find everything here that hearts desire. May the Lord bless you. Go with everyone who is of goodwill and who seeks the truth. Whether he be Catholic, Protestant, Jew or Gentile, white or black, bond or free. Let us thank the Lord that we have the privilege of now seeing that the great theocratic government is here. That evil should quickly pass away and that blessing shall come to stay forever for the glory of the Lord.